Hello everyone, my name is Zim Ahmadi, Peminat Music Tegar Budak Baru Pelajar. Welcome to another episode of Notanada. Today, we're going to review Thirsty by Korean indie artist The Black Skirts. The Black Skirts is a pseudonym for Korean singer-songwriter Jo Hyu Il, and he's part of the High Ground label, a subsidiary of YG Entertainment. Um, that label, High Ground, also includes a famous Korean indie band Hyuko, uh, rapper Tablo, who used to be the CEO, and also electronic musician Idiotape, amongst many other artists out there. It's a very prominent label in East Asia, and it's seeping in through many other circuits as well, including the West, right? And Black Skirts discography is very interesting. A lot of people like to label the Black Skirts as indie rock. However, they've stopped being indie rock since their first album, 201, right? 201 was the only album that actually captures that indie rock sound in songs like Puppy and Stand Still. But everything after that, he explores different genres and different cultural influences from around the world. For example, in songs like uh, in the album Don't You Worry Baby, it's a very twee pop acoustic song to spice it up a bit and to make it funkier. Then there's also uh, the album Teen Baby, where he goes into more shoegazy production. And in Thirsty, the album that we're talking about today, the influences are even more diversified and varied. And it's really exciting to see Jo Hyu Il pushing himself, you know, beyond his comfort zone, having been raised in New York and also exploring different cultural influences for a long time as well. And no song in Thirsty, if I would say so myself, is ever one thing, right? In fact, I think one of the greatest accomplishments of this album is Black Skirts embracing pop appeal while still innovating a lot of its cuts and, and never really sounding too monotonous. And there are influences from so many places in the album, all the way from Hawaii to his homeland Korea itself. One more thing I wanted to point out as well for the introduction is that Jo Hyuil has stated Thirsty is meant to be the grotesque and ugly sequel to his previous album, Team Baby. He wants to explore raw emotions, whether that raw emotions is happiness or anger, he wants to be more unfiltered about it. However, ironically, the songs in this album don't sound ugly or grotesque. In fact, they sound pretty beautiful and very uh, pleasing to the ears and has a lot of romantic atmospheres to it. Let's explore why and how in the album now. One of the major appeals of Thirsty to me is how cohesive it is. Like, although Team Baby, the previous album, had a lot of amazing songs, like everything, this album doesn't have that many standout singles, but has a lot of coherent theme to it that transitions really well. You can already sense that from the very first track, Wrong Question, and how you transition from a deeper synth pop sound into a garage rock sound in the next track, Lester Burnham. And the song references Lester Burnham, who is an actor uh, who is a character in the movie American Beauty and is acted by Kevin Spacey. So that movie is creepy. The actor is also creepy. Now that we know Kevin Spacey has done some creepy things. Um, but the song itself is beautiful as much as it is garage rock and raw, ironically. And I, I appreciate that irony despite the dark subject matter of the song. Next, we have the Spacey romance uh, in the song Island or Queen of Diamonds. And it's reminiscent for me to the song Everything uh, because Everything from Team Baby is this uh, huge uh, dream pop ballad that is epic but at the same time minimal as well and it just brings home the point by being grand and Island has that same exact vibe and I love how the synth solos uh, sound like trumpets in one part at the same time, Joe Hill isn't, isn't worried to innovate past that and, and go a bit crazier because there's also a disco breakdown in the song that sounds like a kazoo is making it, you know, the sound. <laughs> Tells you that this isn't just a pretentious romantic ballad, but can be something more. Next is the song Sangsu Station, which is an R&B feel to it, uh, but that R&B feel is quickly punctuated by tropical beats uh, that bring you to another world. And the vocoder that he uses to, to make that robotic voice effect, the one that you know is mostly used by groups like Daft Punk and also the duo Chromio as well, helps to create a more light-hearted mood to an already somber song. And the way in which Joe Hugh Il combines two very contradictory elements and two contradictory song genres together is such an admirable feat to me. 
The beautiful thing about Thirsty as well are all the callbacks to previous albums. I love that, um, you know, Joe Hill references Team Baby, understandably, because it's the sequel to Team Baby in the song Islands. But he also calls back to the second album, Don't You Worry Baby, in the song Mad Dog Diary, you know, by adopting an acoustic twee pop kind of approach uh, that's simple and romantic and sentimental at the same time. And this callback per se is not without its own innovation because Meadow Diary has like ragtime keys. And also like a hoedown kind of feel to it that makes you want to square dance, right? It's very influenced by country, folksy, Americana music. But it's a sweet song and it's very infectiously catchy. Next is Bollywood, which I think is also a reference to the song Hollywood, one of their previous, one of his previous singles before this. And one of my favorite things about Bollywood is that it's the most distinctive track in the whole album because it uses a sitar, right? And there's a very subtle psychedelic feel to it. However, the sitar is not used like how Ravi Shankar used his sitars in productions with uh, bands like the Beatles. It's not cliche. He uses it as a platform to really push the dream pop and indie rock sound to a more interesting level per se. And Bollywood is not just, you know, using this sitar cliche just so because they want to use Eastern influences or whatever. It really helps to elevate the mood of the song. And I love that midway it changes into a Hawaiian vibe song, the type of theme that you would hear in Kokomo by the Beach Boys or like uh, in Luau tracks, um, you know, Luau being the parties that Hawaiians have by the beach, drinking cocktail, you know, all of that stuff, right? And how the beat changes into a more arena pop sound is super cool to me because it starts off soft and grounded, but then it gets to an epic level. And that atmospheric narrative, I think, that Joe Hu Il can impose uh, can put in his song is found in the entire album. Then you have Holiday, which is to me one of the most one-dimensional songs in the album, so it's very forgettable, but it's still a good cut. Uh, it's got a heartwarming string section to the end, so even when Joe Hill is trying to, you know, be his most uh, blandest and poppiest, there's always some added instrumentation to it to keep it unique. Then there's the song Put Me On Drugs, which has a lot of 80, 80s dream pop to it. Like, you get synthesizer passages that wouldn't look weird in a Kate Bush track, right? Or like even like old Roxanne. I also love that there's like a secret shoegazing track like underneath the song Put Me On Drugs. So you can hear it peeping through the guitars and all these other instrumentations that go on. And the layers in Put Me On Drugs is so uh, exciting and enticing to me because not only is it, um, you know, combining disparate influences, but it still manages to keep uh, a straightforward sound that you can be fam familiar with. Hawaiian Black Sand is a chamber pop song that quickly evolves into an old school prom tune. The reason why I call it a prom tune is because it reminds me of um, the song Earth Angels by the Penguins in Back to the Future. And that transitions happen really quickly. But the modular synths in this track is, I think, one of my favorite things in Thursday because it's so lovely and atmospheric. Um, it's weird, but it does something to the song that makes it romantic. And I think. Just when you thought it couldn't become anything more, Hawaiian Black Sand hits you with a sax solo that is like so good. It's not corny. Um, it's just the right amount of sax solo to really conclude the warmth of the song. Then you have the upright bass intro in On Thinner Than Water, like straddling on. You have the same kind of strings and pianos that you find at the end of Holiday. And the song My Shadow is also a song reminiscent from the second album because it's a romantic acoustic ballad. It even has a little banjo to it. Like, not too much that they sound like uh, Mumford & Sons, but enough to put you in a different wall, right? And to me, this is an example of a Black Skirts cut. Like, probably not duplicated as well in other tracks in the album, but found in previous albums that feels both grand and personal. That this is why Jo Hu Il functions so well as a one-man band, because he plays all the instrumentations and he you know, focuses on the creative direction and production because even though sometimes it doesn't sound polished, there is so much focus and direction to it whenever he wants to go for something that you wouldn't find like so many disparate instruments that don't go together. The reason why he has disparate instruments is because he knows it adds 
to the overall feeling of the track. So unfortunately, the last track of Blood and Thirst, or in bracket King of Hurts, is the most forgettable track. Mostly because it sort of continues the motive that happens in uh, Songs Like Islands. And this, I think, is the inherent flaw in the album Thirsty, the one that stops it from being too perfect. So as much as I appreciate the cohesiveness of this album, I don't think Joe Hugh Ill is doing much to innovate the type of arrangements that he's familiar with when it comes to, you know, his songwriting, especially in comparison to 201 and Don't You Worry Baby, like those albums have the same kind of feeling despite the fact that they're from different genres. Now I understand that maybe Thirsty is a sequel to Team Baby and that's why it sounds like that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't fall into bland territory sometimes, especially in the very last track, Blood and Thirst. So cohesiveness is good, but I feel that there's still a comfort zone that Joe Hill goes back to in spite of the very different instrumentations and influences that fall in Thirsty. So what's my verdict? Ba -ba 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 -na -na. Thirsty feels like Joe Hugh Ill, aka the Black Spirits, patching together all of the influences that he grew up with. It's made with love, it's made with a direction, uh, and he's able to do that with such cohesion that it's a skill, I think, that we should that I appreciate a lot. And it serves almost like a credit roll to me for all of his previous albums, you know, like you know, talking about the previous tracks and how it's come together to form an more evolved version of that track in Thirsty. That being said, it's not a perfect album. It's a really good listen from the first track to the last. But I wish that Joe Hugh Ill explores, you know, a more different arrangement uh, while still keeping true to uh, the type of vibe that we love him for. Because you can see that in tracks like uh, uh, Queens of Diamonds or even in Wrong Question that he does have the ability to experiment. He does have the ability to push himself out of the boundaries. But because it didn't happen consistently throughout the album, it slightly fell short of being an amazing listen. So now it's just a great listen. That's why I'm giving this album a 4 out of 5. So, did you guys like Thirsty? Have you listened to any Korean indie? If you haven't, you should. It's a very rich scene and I think Korean indie, much like other indie scenes in Asia, doesn't matter East Asia, Southeast Asia, is a booming one. You find a lot of great musicians and artists there. If you don't like what I said in the review, you can comment in the section below. Give me your opinions on the Black Spirits. Give me this opi your opinion on Thirsty. Um, if you have any recommendations, you should send it over to our social media at Awful Track Record uh, or ATR Mag 42. Uh, if you like our content, please press like and subscribe. My name is Zim Ahmadi. Goodbye.